morning my dear students in this session we are going to discuss about uh, origin of energy band structure and classification of solids before going to that we have to understand about the an atom so atom is consists of nucleus surrounded by the electronic energy levels if you take an atom separately all these electronic energy levels are discrete energy levels and sharp energy levels and these energy levels are bounded tightly that means if you take the atoms separated by a large distance like in gases if you see here where r indicates interatomic distance between the one atom and the another atom if you observe the outermost energy level of an atom because all inner energy levels are tightly bounded except the outermost energy level so this whenever this interatomic distance is very large all the atoms have the same energy and this energy is very sharp and uh, discrete okay so there is no variation in the outermost energy level due to the another atom whenever two atoms are come closer we can observe there is an interaction between the outermost energy levels of uh, atoms with the another atom so whenever r is decreasing the interaction will come in picture and we can see splitting of the outermost energy level into two energy levels in case of two atoms because to satisfy the always exclusion principle so keep it in mind this if three atoms are come closer what will happen outermost energy will be splitted into three energy levels suppose n atoms are come closer we can observe n energy levels okay instead of one energy level gives two n states of electric so keep it in mind that as interatomic distance decreasing we can observe that splitting of the energy outermost energy level of an electron into two energy levels in case of two atoms suppose if you take the interaction of four atoms then we can observe one energy level is splitting into four energy suppose if you take in case of n atoms this is splitting into n energy levels but the space in between the energy levels is very very small it is in the order of 10 power minus 22 electron volts that is a very very low value and it is very difficult to discriminate between two energies so that it looks like a a band of energy levels suppose if you take an atom having out outermost orbits s and p whenever atoms are coming closer we can observe that both p orbital energy level and s orbital energy level are splitting into n energy levels gives a band of energy for p orbital as well as s orbital but at an equilibrium distance we can observe stable energy bands this we can defined as valence band and conduction band the important parameter here are energy band equilibrium distance valence band conduction band energy gap and fermi level so 
these are practical energy bands but for easy understanding we can draw these energy bands are like a rectangular energy bands if you see here energy band indicates nearly continuous band of electronic energy levels in a solid it is nothing but like a continuum next equilibrium distance this is the interatomic distance at which the energy bands are stable this indicates below the r not or above the r not energy bands are unstable next valence band the highest energy band that is filled in the energy structure of a crystal or a material that means this is the outermost energy level means this is the highest energy of that atom the electrons can occupy is called valence band if you see the conduction band this is the energy band just above the valence band we can find the so many number of conduction bands because above the valence band we can find the okay more uh, higher energy states also so we can find the so many number of conduction band just above this valence band we will take usually take it as a conduction band in a material okay here ev and ec indicates here ev indicates maximum energy of valence band ec indicates minimum energy of conduction band and next one energy gap the gap between the two energy bands we will indicate it as a energy gap a forbidden gap because in this gap we will not find any electron so it is called forbidden energy gap and next important one is fermi level the highest energy level of the electron occupied at low temperature is indicated as the fermi energy level in another way we can say the maximum probable of finding an electron is defined as fermi energy level okay suppose for understanding the okay better way here we have given the how the energy bands will form for different orbitals suppose if you take for 1s s indicates okay it contains only one orbital so it will it can split into two levels if two atoms come in interaction if there is six 12 electron states will come and six energy states will be there and if you see for n atoms 2n energy levels will be there similarly for 2s also 2n energy levels will be there whereas for 2p 6n energy levels will be there because 2p orbital, orbital consists six electrons and it has the six n number of available electronic states okay but here number of energy levels are n only in each case only states will be changed depends upon the orbital now classification of materials based on the energy gap between the conduction band and the valence band we can divide into three types 
which are insulators, semiconductors and conductors. If you see, if you see, if energy gap is very very high, around uh, 9 electron volts, greater than 9 electron volts, the electron jumps from valence band to conduction band requires more energy. So, it is very difficult to jump the electron from valence band to conduction band. So, there is no existence of free of electrons in the conduction band for the electricity conduction. So, it is called an insulator. Suppose if you take the conductor, here there is no gap between the conduction band and the valence band. Sometimes we can also see the overlapping of the conduction band and the valence band. So, we can find the huge number of free electrons because even for small amount of energy, very very small amount of energy, electrons can jump from valence band to the conduction band. So, we can find huge number of free electrons at low, very low energies also. So that electricity will be passed very easily in this type of materials. So these are also called conductors are and also called metal. But in case of semiconductor, in case of semiconductor, this gap is around 0.1 electron volt to 3 electron volts. There is, of course, it is not very large, it is not very small, it is a uh, between the insulators and the conductors. So, we it requires a moderate amount of energy for jumping the electrons from a valence band to the conduction band. That's why, at normal temperatures, room temperatures, this will act as a insulator. But at high temperatures, it will act as a good conductor. Okay. So that's why it is highly dependent on temperature. In terms of temperature. In terms of applied voltage, we have to give the moderate voltage of energy, electrical energy for flow of current. This, if you see, in the first picture, this graph indicates probability of finding the electron. At T is equal to 0, this dotted line indicates the Fermi energy level at 0 Kelvin. That means this is the energy level finding the electron at 0 Kelvin is called Fermi energy level of the material. Okay. <laughs> so, in this case we can see even at high temperature also we are not able to find the more number of electrons in the conduction band. It is almost 0. Whereas in case of semiconductors for uh, moderate applied temperature, we can see the sum of the electrons occupied in the conduction band. But in case of metals, we can observe even at a, okay, low temperature also, very very low temperature also, okay, more number of electrons are occupied in the conduction band. So, based on this energy gap, we can classify the materials as insulator, semiconductor and conductors.